Hi everyone. In today's video we're going over Brandon Harding's new cycle pairs for his Road to Pro. He is trying again to win his IFBB Pro card. Last year he staged with a mind-blowing shredded physique. However it was to get his card because he lost a lot of muscle mass due to his extreme low-calorie diet. This year he plans to do it differently. He tries to come in bigger and fuller and just as lean as last time. So, we are going to discuss his steroid cycle and what I think about it. He's now 30 days into the diet and he started his prep at 242.6 pounds. And after 30 days, he already lost 12 pounds. He seemed to be in really good condition. However, I think that he will have to cut calorie drastically same as last year. So he will probably lose a lot of muscle mass doing the same mistake. He bulked too much in the off season, getting his body fat percentage too high and to get stage lean, 4-5% body fat, he has to cut too hard. In fact, he says his plan is to lose 2 to 3 pounds per week as he prepares for the competition. To lose 1 pound of fat you need to cut out 3,500 calories from your diet. That equates to 500 calories per day. And so if he's going to lose 2 to 3 pounds per week, that means he has to be in a 1,000 to 1,500 calorie deficit every single day. I'm telling you that this is too much, especially if you are already quite lean. In the end you are losing a lot of muscle, although he is using PED. Yes, you're going to lose fat too, but you want to preserve as much as possible the lean tissue you've built in the off season. But what you want to do is growing to while you start your cycle. This means that you should be putting on muscle you're dieting done. and because he's dieting so hard, it's going to be next time possible to build muscles. If he had bulked less in the off season, using a lower calorie surplus, he would have been able to cut with more calories and in doing so he would literally build muscle as he preparing for competition. But he says he's put on 7 pounds of lean tissue since the same time last year and so he says this is amazing. And this might sound amazing, but what is the point of gaining all that muscle if you're going to strip it down as you diet for the competition? When you diet to this extent and you're in a severe calorie deficit, especially for this long, trying to get to 5% body fat, inevitably you're going to lose muscle. I'm quite happy with how we're looking considering the fact that we've actually lost just over 12 pounds in the first four weeks. So He's deeded for 30 days and lost over 12 pounds. Guys, 12 pounds is a lot and he still need to lose more. Many IFBB pros who don't bulk too much in the off season probably has to lose only 12 to 15 pounds to get ready for show and so they can cut using a less severe deficit and so they are able to keep more muscle. My abs went for so long with the off season. I've not seen like any definition in this area. So sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, bro, look, this is kind of nice to like actually see abs. So he says he could barely see his abs in the off season. And so he was clearly never fat. He looks great, amazing. But for bodybuilding purposes, the more fat you put on in the off season, the more you're gonna have to cut down to get into competition shape. And so my advice would be to get to the point he is right now in his off season. Imagine if he could start his diet now and not been already dieting for 30 days, wouldn't be far better. Because in those 12 pounds he lost, it wasn't all the fat, there was lean tissue too. And in comparison, instead of cutting for those 30 days, he could have been building and putting on muscle, thanks to the PD he's taking and now he would have more muscle and less fat to lose. When, for the longest time in the off season, I was in a massive surplus and there was no like, I don't know, like detail showing at all. He was in a massive surplus. Do you really think that being in a massive surplus will make you build more muscle in the end? No, because the extra calories are going to be stored as fat. You need a surplus to build muscle, yes, but it doesn't have to be huge. Otherwise, you'll only put on more fat. He could easily build muscle staying at 12 to 15% body fat, not go beyond that. With a surplus of 500 calories, he would be just fine. And now he could have continued to build more muscle, even with a small calorie deficit of 500 calories thanks to the PD. I did an injection in my lat and my lat on this side has been absolutely pulsating the entire workout. Like That's my opinion. I would suggest you rather than doing injections in the lats, do in the delts, one shoulder then the other, then move to the glutes. Also, make sure to have at least one week between injecting in the same spot in order to give time to that spot to recover. And that, conjoined with a juicy back pump, is quite stretching for the fascia if you have to inject in your lats then inject more than one and a half cc because your back it's not a spot that can handle a lot of volume different spots can handle more volume if you're used to doing shots perhaps you can do three cc in a lot of your areas 
but if you're new, one and a half cc or less, that is something that most people can handle with little to no pain. Cardio is now at 30 minutes. I'm not sure if I told you that it was slightly increased, whereas before it was a little bit slower than that, but considering we're getting a little bit more fit. Notice this, he's doing cardio more often now. This has allowed him to get fitter and to recover better during his workout. So, it's better to do your cardio round to get these benefits all the year, especially with PD that put a lot of pressure on your cardiovascular system you want to have a stronger one. So, by doing cardio all year you'll get better at burning more calories in the same amount of time, because you're stronger. And when you're stronger you work harder, and that means more calories burned. So don't neglect your cardio, do it year round, and you'll burn more calories allowing you to be leaner and eat more and also your contest prep will be easier. Before Callum does decide to change the stack and like increase whatever we're taking, potentially add in something else, this is something that I have absolutely no power of. So Brandon says he has no power, no control over the stack that he's taking because his coach is saying, well, I don't like this approach because with PD you want to have the knowledge and power to say your opinion since is your body. So ask why? Why this compound and not that one? Why that amount? Be informed. The coach has to help you. They have to be able to make the alterations, the changes that you need. So, no, let's move to his stack. So I am going to break it down with what we do take to start the day, which is two IU of GH. We have four IU of GH split between the morning and the nighttime. So he's taking growth hormone two IU twice a day. I personally see nothing wrong with that, but I don't think he needs it. You want to use growth hormone later. Now it's twirly. Of course it will help him build a little bit more muscle, but I just think he should be able to make the improvements he needs without it. If he can't get an IFBB Pro card without growth hormone, how is he going to do as an actual pro? Proviron, that started straight away, is at 25 milligrams every single morning. He's going to take Proviron at 25 milligrams a day, but likely it would be better to split it up into a divided dose perhaps 12 and a half milligrams in the morning 12 and a half milligrams at night but I know that can get annoying splitting pills in half. He is using it because he probably wants to increase the strength of the cycle, making the testosterone work better, because he will have more bioavailable testosterone. Also, he likely don't want to have any kind of gyno formation. So he's looking for a lean and dry gains. Clenbuterol, that actually started, that's the only thing that actually has increased. We started at 40 micrograms and now we are on 60 micrograms. Worley on using clenbuterol as a fat burner and at such doses. 40 milligrams it already pretty high. You should be able to burn fat without using clen. You want to supplement clen to break a plateau during fat loss, not earlier. At the start of your prep you are able to lose fat just by reducing calories and doing cardio. You don't need a fat burner. Instead, by doing this he will have to constantly increase his dosage because the body gets accustomed to. Therefore, you would use clen butyrol closer to the end of your prep when you actually need it, you need that extra boost to push through the day. We have started pretty much at the beginning this time, especially considering where we started. Like, I, I think I started like a little bit higher body fat than the last prep. He's saying he started using it earlier because he started his prep at a higher body fat than the last one. That's proof that he has bulked too much during the off season and know he has to cut too hard to make up for that gap. On the left is me 10 weeks out last year and on the right is me 10 weeks out this year. There is exactly seven pound of weight difference. He says it's 10 weeks out now, and he's exactly 7 pounds bigger than last time. So, he has put on a lot of muscle, and he says he looks better. But he already has to use extra fat burners. So, is he really ahead? I don't think. I think that he's risking again cutting calories hard to get ready for stepping on stage losing all those extra muscle he built. Next, we are on 20 micrograms of Yehimbine. This is in the morning, Peb the Clen, Peb the GH. We do all these things before cardio. Next up, 20 milligrams of Yohimbine. It's a drug derivated from an African tree, which is used to boost athletic performance and improve fat loss and makes you feel less hungry. Be careful because to someone it can cause side effects making you feeling sick. Of testinamphate, Primo Enanthate and Mastron Enanthate. Test, Mast, and Primo. Then the basic stack. Testosterone, Primo, and Masterin. Anyone who wants to start a cycle should have these three compounds. Having testosterone as a base, and Brandon says he's only going to use 300 milligrams. He's doing this because he wants to look lean throughout the cut. He doesn't want to convert too much testosterone to estrogen, and he doesn't want to get gyno. Therefore, he's going very low on the testosterone but at the same time to make it more stronger, he's adding Primo and Masterin. 
The benefit of Primo and Masterin is that they don't get converted into estrogen, and so you get solid dry gains. This is kind of a movie star stack, who doesn't want to get water retention and look puffier. Technically, you don't need both Masterin or Primo, you can take either one or the other. A pretty solid stack to start with. We're not starting with anything crazy. We're not on trend. To be honest, I don't know if I'm going to touch trend the entire prep. He doesn't know if he's going to take trend. Well, trend is the most powerful and most dangerous PED, but the gains provided by trend are huge. And so if he really want to get his pro card, he should do anything to achieve it. He used growth hormone and insulin in the off season to try to get massive to succeed in getting his IFBB pro card. So why don't use trend? Trend alone can provide the gains he would need to win a show. We're on a 300 test, 500 primo, and 200 mass. So he's going to be doing 500 milligrams primo, which is about two thirds as strong as testosterone. So that would be equivalent to doing about 350 milligrams of test. Master in only 200 milligrams, which, as primo, is two thirds as strong as testosterone. It's a good starting point, since he has just begun his prep so he could later up the doses. Split between four injections of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, break, and then go again on Monday. He's doing four injections a week. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Honestly, it doesn't have much sense. When using PED, you want to have stable blood levels, so he should do injections every other day. It doesn't make sense to inject two days in a row, then a day off, then two other injecting days, and then two days off. So, it would be better to divide the total amount of what he has to take by 3.5. That way you avoid up and down with your blood levels and, instead, you get a stable level throughout the entire cycle. I definitely think this year we need to pull size. I definitely think this year that we've added tissue, but to really get a pro card to stand up there with the big boys, we're going to require some fullness too. I think Brandon is overcomplicating things. Thinking that it's the last day or two that causes lack of fullness, that he didn't have enough carbs or the diuretics or what he was eating. Yes, those things can make a huge difference. But the real problem was that he cut too hard and he lost too much muscle. Eating under 2,000 calories a day as the show approaches made him lose so much muscle in the final few weeks before the show, a lot more than the last day or two. However, I hope he could win his pro card, but I don't really know if he would. If he doesn't this time, would be the perfect time to set up his off-season diet differently. Not bulking too much, get around 12 to 15% body fat and stay there. So this time he will not have to cut too much calories and he will spare a lot more muscle mass. If you want to know more about diet and nutrition and why 95% of diets fail, check my nutrition book. I'll give you all the info you need to lose weight and keep it off for good. Hope you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, like and share it with your friends. See you on the next one.